And to begin that uh, management layer, I think we're going to go back and look, uh, start with the adjacent uh, homeowners. Um, people have lived around the lake for uh, a long time. And um, uh, they've been, I, I believe, good stewards of the land uh, over, over the years. And uh, you, we see that they've dealt with the monster coming and going and, um, and have found different ways to, to do that. At one time, they actually was some um, little, little farming that went on on the big dry lake bed. And uh, I know we spent some time pulling up fences from where that used to happen. So um, I've asked for non Griffin, Griffith, Griffith, <laughs> get it right, <laughs> um, to, um, to share a little bit about what, what he knows and the things that, that he's done. He's been uh, on the lake shore for quite a few years. So, Ron. Well, my name is Vernon Griffith. Uh, I was born in Montpelier uh, a number of years ago. Uh, spent my teenage years in Fishhaven, and uh, we currently have a home, uh, summer home in Lake Town, and uh, I think we're in our 42nd year there. And so during that time, we've uh, seen the cycles a few times. And um, I think Claudia asked me to share our little window of this picture. Uh, I don't have the answers. Uh, I've, I've really appreciated coming here and, and learning and uh, you know getting the knowledge that others have. <laughs> and and I, I feel this morning a little bit like the fellow that uh, you've heard about in the story that uh, loved golf and wanted to uh, golf so bad on Sunday, but uh, he had a responsible position in uh, one of the other activities of Sunday and uh, never could. But one day he did. And uh, would you believe he got a hole in one? And uh, the problem is, is who was he going to tell? <laughs> And I feel a little bit like that. I don't know whether I should be telling this or, or not, but hopefully it'll be helpful. Uh, and again, I wanted to stress that I'm looking at it just from my little myopic window, you know, that affects me. And so, um, if we can um, move this where we can see it, perhaps. Now, anyone that has the slightest degree of artistic talent will immediately recognize this as an actual photograph of the southern uh, eastern part of Bear Lake. And of course we have the, the water here. Uh, we have a road that goes around the lake here. We have uh, summer cabins and uh, occasionally depending on the year we have some distance between the water and uh, where the homes are. Uh, when I moved here the water was right up to the the high water mark and as far as we knew that's the way the lake was. Uh, but it didn't take long, about one year, to <laughs> realize that's not the case. And uh, as the water receded, we had this beautiful uh, beach that uh, we enjoyed. And it would go out and it'd come back. And, but we found that when it goes out and stays for a while, the beautiful sandy beach becomes a beautiful green beach. 
because there's a lot of, in the area that we live, water. And uh, as the growth came, you know, between us and, and, the, and the water, uh, it was difficult to see the ground. And uh, when, we'd, when we'd try to, I think the real estate man said yesterday that people either want to see the lake or get to the lake. In our case, it was getting to the lake, and so we would find the route that was the driest, you know, so that we could negotiate our way to the lake. But as the vegetation comes up, th that was hard to see. And, and it didn't take long before we realized everybody else wanting to get to the lake went, you know, some of the roots weren't as good and they would get stuck. Every time they'd get stuck in the bog, they would dig out and pull out and spin out and it wasn't long be before it was a pretty ugly mess. And so we thought, well, what if we mowed <laughs> a little path where this dry path was so people could see where to go and stay out of the bog? And, and that worked pretty well, except we discovered that uh, everybody decided that would be a good place. <laughs> and uh, so as more people came, it wasn't quite as good because, you know, the more traffic, the muddier it got. And so the next idea was, well, just to the immediate neighbors, <laughs> what if I found their dry place and mowed them a place? <laughs> And, and then we each went down and, and it seemed to sustain that kind of traffic. Uh, uh, anyway, that was an approach and I'm talking in the, over the course of 40 years here. Uh, another thing that we noticed was as the vegetation grew and the lake uh, was out when it did come up, there was those couple of years that you know, was required to clean it out. And in the meantime, the kids wouldn't even go out to it. It was kind of like wading through the, the muck, you know, just you couldn't see it, you couldn't, it just, you could feel it though. And, uh, and so we found that if we mowed it a little shorter, at least you could get through it easier. Um, well, that's kind of, pretty much the things that we have done for most of the years, but in, the, in recent years, when the lake has been out, we found that, you know, there are a lot of uh, trees, you know, the Russian olives and the cottonwoods and the, the things that come from the, the homeowners part of the, the lake that, that grew up, and then when the lake would come up and the bog would be there, we were a little uneasy about, you know, kids and boats and things, you know, running into that. But we noticed where, in our particular case, where we just simply mowed, we didn't have any trees, we didn't have any, anything, except the nat what we think is the natural growth, you know, because every two weeks, it looked like you hadn't been there <laughs> as far as, as mowing. Um, the neighbors have the, um, um, what are they? Fra fr yeah. So thick that they couldn't even get to the lake. Uh, and then there was trees, you know, small, but some are getting big now, all over the place. But where we've mowed, you know, we haven't had any of that at all. And so whether that's an answer uh, for our kind of environment, you know, we're not suggesting it's the same situation if somebody's got sand or rock or but in our swampy area 40 years of experience seems to us like in trying to be a good steward and to you know keep the beach from getting torn up so bad and and having the problems that seemed like an approach <laughs> we hope it's not just a hole in one and <laughs> and we've now told someone 
at, at any rate, um, if I had uh, put this in color so that you could have seen a little better, you could have seen the top of Conley's head as he made his daily run around the lake. And down here you could see Carolyn swimming in the morning uh, every day. But uh, if you can use your imagination and kind of picture, at least in our situation, what we've tried to do, we hope that will be helpful. And uh, no doubt others who have different circumstances, you know, would have a completely different approach. And, and so one of the things that we hope that can come out of this is that as we uh, determine how to best manage this, that, that perhaps there won't be a one-size-fits-all to every piece of the lake, but that we can do what's right for each part of the lake, and together we can make it a, a lake that we're all uh, proud to be a part of. Thank you very much.